activity, we need to draw a flowchart to display the numbers from 10 down to 1. In other words, we want to display the numbers 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's what the question is asking us to do. So we are starting off at the number 10 and we need to eventually reach the number 1. So if you are asked to write or to draw a flowchart, at least you should know this is your start. So I'm starting my flowchart. I have an arrow going down. If I read the question carefully, I need to understand, is there any input? Do I need to input anything? And the question wants me to display 10. I, I know the numbers I want to start at, and I know where I want to get to. So there's nothing to input. So the fact that I'm going 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, I'm thinking I need an accumulator. So that's what's going through my, nine, my mind. I need an accumulator. This accumulator, uh, let's assume it is called count. We should start this accumulator off at 10 because that's the first value. So we need to initialize it to 10. And then if it starts off at 10, what must I do to 10 to get 9? Well, that's where in my accumulator, I'm going to say count should be count and minus 1. So here, that's your accumulator. And each time I'm subtracting 1. So if I started at 10 minus 1, it'll take me to 9. So my current value is now 9. If I have 9 and a minus 1, it'll take me to 8. A minus 1, it'll take me to 7. So this is essentially what you needed to realize. That you need to initialize at 10 and you want to decrease by 1. And you have to also remember, I want to stop. I want to stop when I reach 1. I don't want to get to zero because the question doesn't want me to display zero. So I need to initialize. So that is going to be a process. So let's create a variable count and let's set it to 10. I could use any variable I wanted to. Count is just an appropriate name. So I'm calling it count. So the first box I'm doing is count equals 10. Then I need this to decrease. So my next process is going to be count equals count minus one. So from 10 at box number two, from 10 I'm going to go to 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. So I need to start creating some repetition coming back, coming back up here. So that's what I need. I need some repetition. And each time I'm going to, going to repeat and I come back to this statement here, it's decreasing count by 1. So let's continue. I've got... I've got count. I've got count equals count minus one. And then my next step is to display because we want it to be displayed. The values need to be. The question says display. Display means output. Output means we need a box like this. And we're going to say print. 
You can have a message, but if I read the question carefully, it does not want me to display um, number 10, number 9, number 8. Uh, if I read the question, it says display the numbers from 10 down to 1. So it just wants them 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. There's no message for it. So in this case, I'm just going to say print count without a message. So count starts with 10. It becomes nine, uh, 10, 10 minus 1 is 9, and then it's going to print count, which is 9, and then it's going to decrease to 8, and it's going to print 8, and it'll just continue like that. And then I need to go and make a decision. And in this decision, remember that it's count is decreasing 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So while this repetition is true, there's my repetition. While it is true, I need to figure out what my condition is going to be. So while the repetition is true, I need to repeat these steps. But what is the condition that I put in here? So I'm going to say while, while count is great. Remember, it's decreasing. So while count is greater than, while count is greater than one. So that's the condition I'm going to try. And let's, let's see how that works out. So my statement count is greater than one. So that's box four. And eventually, if it is false, we're going to come this way and I'm running out of space. So I'm going to then say stop. So eventually when count greater than one is false, it's going to reach, it's going to terminate the loop. So I've drawn a flowchart. I have this flowchart, but I'm not sure whether it's correct or not. So the only way for me to determine whether the flowchart is correct is to draw a trace table. So let's draw a trace table to check to see whether the flowchart works or not. So here's my trace table. This is my trace table. In my trace table, I put down all my variables. So the first variable I'm using in this flowchart is count. C-O-U-N-T, count. So that's my first variable. In box number two, I've also got count. And then print. So that's an output statement at box three. And then I've got a condition. So I always like to have my conditions in my trace table. So this is count greater than one and output. So these are my columns that I am creating for my trace table. So let's start. So we start the process at the beginning and we get to box number one. At box number one, count has the value 10. Okay, we've got count has the value 10. So box number one, that's done. We move to box number two. Count equals count minus one. So count minus one, count is 10. 10 minus one is nine. And then it goes to the print count in box number three, print count, count is nine. Print means output, so it's gonna print nine. Immediately I can see that there's a problem. I need to start by displaying 10. I don't want to start at nine, I want to start at 10. So this trace table has helped me to find a mistake. So, for me to display the first value to be 10, 
I need to start my count at 11. So if I started my count at 11, let's 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 try this out. And let's start it again. Box number one, count equals 11. Box number two, count equals count minus one. 11 minus one is 10. Print count. Now it's printing 10. So now it displayed the value I wanted it to start off at, which was 10. Now let's test my condition. Remember the condition is count is greater than one. That's the condition. So count is 10. Is 10 greater than one? Is 10 greater than one? That is true. 10 is greater than one. So as long as it's true, I go back to box number two. Count equals count minus one, right? This is now gone. So 10 minus one is nine. Print count, box number three, it's gonna print nine. Box number four is count greater than one, is nine greater than one? That's true. So follow the pathway, taking me to box two, count equals count minus one, which is now eight. Box three, print count, count is eight. There it is, it's eight. Count greater than one, so is eight greater than one? That's true. And this is going to keep going because remember our condition only becomes false when it's not greater than one. So count at box two, at box two, you're going to have seven. It's going to print seven at box three. Box four is seven greater than one. That's true. Back to box two. It's going to print six. Uh, count is going to become six at box two. Box three, it's going to print six. Box four is six greater than one. That's true. Then back to box two, count equals count minus one, which is five. Box three, it prints five. Is five greater than one at box four? It's true. Back to box two, count equals count minus one. And each time I'm losing the value. So five minus one is four. Print at box three, four. Is four greater than one? That's true. Back to box two, I'm now at three. Print count, which is three. At, at box three, box four is three greater than one. That's true. Back to box two, count equals count minus one. Count becomes two. We're getting there. Box three, print count, which is two. Is count greater than one? Is two greater than one? That's true. Back to box two, it becomes one. Print count, it's going to print one. Is count greater than one? Is one greater than one? That's false. One is not greater than one. One is less than one. Uh, sorry, one is equal to one. One is equal to one. It's not greater than one. So that's false. Now I follow the branch that's false, and that takes me to stop. So if I look at the question, the question wanted me to display the numbers from 10 down to 1. Let's look at our output. Let's look at the output. I've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So I am happy that flowchart is working the way I want it to work to answer the question. Now, some of you could perhaps be thinking if you are doing flowcharts for the, if you are new to flowcharts, how was I supposed to know that I needed count to be set to this value greater than one in this flowchart? This comes with practice. 
If your flowchart is increasing, then you're going to have count equals count plus one. Start off at zero, and then you'll have a condition count less than 10 as an example. But when it's decreasing and you want it to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, then start off at a certain value, decrease your accumulator, and then have a condition that's greater than a smaller value so that eventually the condition becomes false. And this happens with practice. Through practice, you will understand this better.